Hello everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, and merry meet. It is time for a book review. So, I got my coffee and my book. And as you can see from the title, I am reviewing The Giver by Lois Lowry. The Giver is basically what was out uh, before The Hunger Games, before Divergent, and whatever other dystopian is out right now, because of course there's older dystopians in this one. But this one has probably been one of the most popular before that, within like no, it's been more than a 10-year time frame, but still. The Giver. So, where do I start? I love this book. Despite the fact that it's marked um, between juvenile, I think, and young adult, I think it leans more towards young adult. But I think occasionally, depending on where you are, this sometimes can be found in more of a children's section. I think if you're probably like in the fifth or sixth grade, you could read this. It's fairly easy to read. And, you know, it, like I said, it, it's not a lot of big words or anything. It's fairly easy to read. But what I liked about this is that it is not really dumbed down. I mean, it's written, like I said, for younger people. However, the plot, the theme, you know, the concepts were not, like, dumbed down. They weren't babied for them. So I probably should get on telling you about... Or I should get it on to telling you about what this book is about, right? So, I will read you the back. Jonas's world is perfect. Everything is under control. There is no war or fear or pain. There are no choices. Every person is assigned a role in the community. When Jonas turns 12, he is singled out to receive special training from the giver. The giver alone holds the memories of true pain and pleasure of, and, and pleasure of life. Now it's time for Jonas to receive the truth. There is no turning back. So, in this place that Jonas lives, the main character, he lives in the community. I don't think they ever gave it a name, they just called it the community. And in the community, the way they prevent war and violence and everything is, as the back said, there are no choices. They live in what they call sameness. Basically, um, the weather is all the same. None of them see color. They are assigned not only a job, but their spouse and children as well. One of the jobs that are assigned uh, to girls is birth mother. And their job is just to have children to make family units. There is a mother, a father, a son, and a daughter. So you don't pick your spouse and you don't pick your children. They pair you up with somebody and this other person's sole job is just to have children to give out to these families. So Jonas receives the job of becoming um, the receiver of memories. And he goes to see the man called the giver. And as time goes on, Jonas starts to learn about things that are forbidden in his community. And it's really sad and it kind of makes you like really grateful, you know, that we have choices whether they are good or bad and no matter the outcome, you know, you got you have to think about the outcome and everything, but the fact that we are allowed to make those choices, um, those mistakes and everything else, because to truly never have that 
we would also have to be rid of the good in our lives. Anything can be used for good or bad. And the choices should be up to us. As humans, we should be allowed to make mistakes. And just because bad, bad things happen does not mean that we should stop things altogether because we will have to take away those good things. You know, one of my favorite parts is uh, the memory about the sled and the grandparents and everything because they are put in family units, so Jonas never had grandparents. He has no idea what that is. Then he starts to realize the color of a girl's hair and certain sounds and just memories and everything and you know it's kind of sad to think that somebody wouldn't have those things but in order to have a perfect society we would have to take away everything even things that we find good because there really is no good without bad and that's just the reality of the world but the beauty of it is, is that we get to make those choices. We get to experience all of that. And that's why this is, like I said, one of my, you know, most favorite books. Despite the fact that, you know, it is made for a younger audience. But honestly, it is very deep. And I think even if you're an adult, you should read this if you have not. Because this is amazing. This is one of the best. Uh, books in young adult literature. Actually, I shouldn't even say that. It's one of the best books, in my opinion, of literature, period. And a great dystopian. So, yeah, if you liked any of those other books, I highly, highly recommend this one. So, thanks for watching. Check out The Giver. About the movie, I don't know if I'll see it, just because... Watching the previews, the commercials, or whatever, really pissed me off. There is no reason to have made them older, okay? People have been waiting years now for this to become a movie. And it only became a movie because the dystopian trend is out right now. There was The Hunger Games and Divergent and all that. I mean, to some degree it makes sense because if it's a trend going on... Make a movie out of a, a dystopian book that came before those two. But what pisses people off, or at least people like me, is the fact that we've been waiting. You know, I read this in ninth grade, and I'm 27 now. So, no, actually, I think I wrote it, read it in eighth grade, maybe. But anyways, it's it's been over 10 years now. And this book is... um. Oh, a while before that. Let me check the publication date. 93 it came out. So I was like a kid kid when this came out. And just a couple years ago, they finally decided to make a movie. And it looks like crap. I mean, I've heard that it's good. But I just find things about it unnecessary. They didn't have to up the age and add romance and everything. Kids were reading this. They still do. That means they're not all oh, completely stupid. Okay, I find that kind of thing insulting to not just younger people, but readers in general. I know they change things up a bit with movies, depending if things within the years have changed. But the way the story is told is not told, you know, in a regular community, this and that. So, you really don't have to follow certain things. Or certain changes, you know what I mean? I just wish they would have left it alone. Jonas is supposed to be 12. You know, romance and stuff is not really supposed to be in there. I mean, I guess you could add it to show that they didn't have it. But I just find what I've heard about the movie kind of unnecessary. 
skip the movie. Well, you don't have to skip the movie. I'm not going to tell you what to do. You can watch it. But read the book. Like, if you had to choose between the movie and the book. Book. So, again, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.